let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The birth of Christ is news only to the unbelievers. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn, and he called his name Jesus. Second lesson, Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Golden text, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Quote, Brethren, I bring you good tidings. These tidings are both old and new. It is just as if somebody sends you a parcel and for the period of 20 years you have never opened this parcel. Therefore, it still remains a parcel with the contents unknown to you. That parcel may contain money, it may contain a check or a passbook or things that are needful to you, yet you keep on suffering, not knowing that all the things that you need are contained in that parcel in your hand. Let us suppose that someone comes by and asks you why you keep the parcel without opening it to see the contents. Then you do so and behold, you have been suffering in the midst of plenty. Those contents become new to you, yet the parcel had been with you for many years. This is exactly the story of Christ for the world. Christ is ever existing. Brethren, some say Christ is born today. Others say he has not yet come. Some also declare that he was born a long time ago. If you examine the scriptures, you will find that he has no newness. He was here before the pillars of this earth were laid. When the world was created, he and the Father existed. The very first person on earth, Adam, is Christ. If not, God would not have told Adam, I give you dominion over all creation. If not, God would not have authorized him to give names to all the things that he had created. It is not what I want to remind you now, but I believe you have already known that his kingdom has no beginning and has no end. Do not think that just because our Lord Jesus Christ was born, died and resurrected, that that was all about him. No, he has been before the foundation of the earth. It is a pity to note that he is here among men, but people do not know him. There was never a time he had not been everywhere, but the pity is that nobody recognized him. 
once when in a dialogue with the Jews he referred them to the well of Jacob they expressed their perplexity about his age seeing that he was talking like an eyewitness about an incident of thousands of years past to the days of their father Abraham to set them on their legs he informed them that before Abraham he was the scriptures cannot be discerned from human wisdom and the flesh cannot comprehend its content if you start to trace our Lord's history and genealogy from Abraham you fall short here for he himself said before Abraham I was why we say our Lord is from the root of Abraham is due to God's covenant when he said you will beget a son who will rule heaven and earth that is no proof that before then he was not in existence no he had been there all the time Christ is the word brethren at another time they quizzed him saying every time you tell us the Lord says this the Lord says that where is this God in his reply he made them to understand why the word became flesh and dwelt among them you are witnesses of his glory today that was why the Israelites kept on asking questions about Christ as they were anxious to know him but the three wise men recognized him and traveled far to bow down and present their gifts before him these three wise men did not do it out of the promptings of the flesh but they first of all recognized him in spirit so brethren flesh and blood cannot know him what does the bible say it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that was in john chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 brethren from this you can see that the earth was from him human beings were from him the fish the animals the trees were all from him nothing was created outside but all came out from him did you hear of god creating fish trees birds and all other things we learned that he only spoke and all other things came into existence when he created adam did he create another person he only took a rib out of adam to create eve so that eve was part of adam and adam was part of eve if eve came, came from adam and adam from eve who do you think this creation is or from where did the creation of man start if you want to trace the descent of our lord jesus christ you will end up with adam the question is who was the blessed virgin mary christ was the one that is to say that eve came out of adam and our lord jesus christ came out of mary as mysterious as it is for a man to come out of a woman so creation is a mystery note 
that Adam and Eve constitute this one God, Christ. Just as our Lord Jesus and Blessed Holy Mary constitute the same one God, Christ. Now, do you know who the mother, the brother, and the father of Adam were? Is it not clear that Adam and Christ is God and God is Adam? Do you not hear? Let us make man in our own image. That is to say, like ourselves. If you believe and subscribe to this, why do you still doubt? Why do we doubt Christ as a king and master who reigns over all? He who controls the waters, the earth, man, and all dominion? It is this passage I referred you to when the Lord of hosts came to this earth and no one knew him. It is not important that you come to fast and pray or worry yourself unnecessarily. All your needs are already ascertained. As God cannot die, so also Christ cannot die because he is the controller of death and the AIDS and both heaven and earth. He continuously confirms that he and the Father are one. Our Lord Jesus Christ is like the parcel I illustrated earlier. As the parcel remained unwrapped, so also Christ remains folded as to reveal that he is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is everything. Christ is the ruler of everything. He is in the fish. He is within your house. He is in the air. Why do you not believe in his existence? It does not cost you anything, nor do you need to dance before you can obtain him. The only thing is to believe, to know him as God, to worship and adore him. The Pharisees, being doubtful, said that they knew who our Lord Jesus Christ was and that they knew who his father and mother were. They, they contended that the supposed Christ posterity would not be known by anybody in this era. It is incumbent on you that you recognize him because the time is right. Our Lord Jesus Christ can change to become a man or a young girl. He can change into a flame of fire or into any form he chooses for his divine purpose. This is so because he is everything. Imagine as three persons were seen that were, they were Moses, Elijah and Christ. After Christ's transfiguration on the mountain, do not misconstrue into believing that there were actually three persons in reality. Only one entity was seen and that was the Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know the voice that proclaimed, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear he him. The voice was that of our Lord Jesus Christ manifesting his glory. Read the first lesson again. First lesson, Matthew chapter 1 verse 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Brethren, why do you say that other people are worshipping man? 
Is there any reason why you cannot worship man? Do you not believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is a man? He is God and he is also a man. Do you not believe that God is in you? That he is a consuming fire? That water cleanses all impurities? Have you got any reason for questioning his authority? Do you not realize that the more you are on the findings of the mystery of God, the more confounded you become? He said, Blessed is he who does not see but believes. The Israelites desired seeing God. But when they saw God face to face, they believed not in Him. Ask yourself these questions. Did the people of old, like the high priests and the Pharisees and the Levites, recognize Him? Did the scientists know our Lord Jesus Christ? Did Herod know Him? It was because of their non-cognizance of him that made them fail, stumbled, and fell down. A careful child would beware, or else what killed his father will surely kill him. Why Christ was killed, brethren? Christ was killed merely because he said that he and the Father were one. They wondered why he as a man made himself equal with God. Christ in his reply told them, Ye are gods. If you in your human level are turned as God, how much more me who is sent from God if you do not believe in me, what of my works? Have you ever seen such a person who can do the works he did? If you say he is God and that he is not man, may I know if he was not born of a woman, the Virgin Mary, a person born by a woman, is a human being. If you regard him as a man only, could his own brother do the works that he did? This is where we fall short of the wisdom of God. The scriptures state that a child was born and that his name was Jesus. This was not an ordinary child but the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Can you imagine how he, as the Lord, would forsake everything of his and go to somewhere else? He is in heaven, he is on earth, he is in the water. This very little child, all the power of death and the age are under his control. Do you believe that before he was born, he had already been here doing his work as he was commissioned? When David put a stone in his sling and killed Goliath, who do you think was that stone? Was the stone not our Lord Jesus Christ? Who do you think is in all the seas? in the trees and in everything existing and non-existing, they are Christ. When Moses struck the rock and water oozed out, you are made to understand that that rock was our Lord Jesus Christ. He has asked you to request Anything of him that he will do it for you. If you want water, he is ready to produce water for you. This is why 
I tell you to ask him for whatsoever you want. Is it a child that you need or power? Simply acquaint him with all your needs, for he will surely grant you your request. He does not refer you to any place such as the hospital or to the sorcerer. Bear in mind that he is everywhere. Simply speak to him, for he is the embodiment of everything in the universe. He is the Lord of Lords, and he has promised to grant you anything that you ask the Father in his name. Do not forget that he is the Son of Man, that he was born of a woman. But I tell you to forget the human side of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bear in mind that he is God because he has no father, yet he is the father. He advise us, love ye one another as I also loved you. Is it not sufficient that you are one with our Lord Jesus Christ? He is inside you. Where do you think he has gone to? Christ hears you as you spoke, but you have to know, worship, reverence, and believe that he cannot die because he is still at work. As you pray, have you not seen him appearing in diverse forms? If you have recognized him as your Lord and Master, then you have to call on him at any time and for whatever you need. He knows when you are in need of money, and that is why you were visited by someone who gave you money as a gift. Is that not Christ, the Lord who gave you the money? Whenever you are stranded, knock your head for a relief will come. If you have no transport money, simply knock your head and believe in him and in a short time you will either be offered free ride or transport fare to your destination. It is Christ who does all the activities for his people. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson. Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Brethren, do you know why these things were recorded? It was done so that you may not be deceived that God is not a man. It is a reminder to you always that Christ is man. Anybody with a contrary opinion is antichrist. This story about our Lord Jesus Christ is not a fable or a borrowed one. It is real and factual. It has been emphatically revealed that it is a real story and that he is flesh and blood. During his ascension, the angel who stood by told the apostles that this same Jesus whom ye see being taken up into heaven will in likewise come back in the same form. Christ told his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. This is why he came in the form of a man, so that you may know that he can come back in the same form as a human being, that you may recognize and worship him. You should all beware of those who tell you not to worship man because they are leading you to destruction. You know him as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It is worth questioning why he forsook 
his glory to come down to earth. He had been the king and lord of all. His dominion over all creations has existed from time immemorial. He has established that whatever is good for the Jews is also good and must be done for the Gentiles. As you come to this assembly, you must emulate the three wise men, not by too much talk, but by action, because faith without work is dead. As he said, as I love you, ye also love one another, because when you adhere to this instruction, it means that you know him for all that you do are done to him. You can bear me out that one has to renew certain license yearly. This should be applicable to love. That is to say, your love must be practical. Read the golden text again. Golden text, Matthew chapter 2 verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Brethren, you are surmising that if you were there in those days, you would have done this or that. That same Lord is the one you have come now to worship. He is the same yesterday, today, and will be the same forever. What you imagine you would have done then, do it now. He is one who does not die. He goes nowhere. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and so is always present. Your knowledge of God should differ from that of the devil. Brethren, you say you know God. All right. The devil also believes in him and recognizes him. If your love is not translated practically, it means that you do not believe in him. If you believe that God is here on earth working, you will do exactly as the three wise men did. It is a great pity that if the Lord has not revealed himself to you, you cannot comprehend the essence of practical faith. There were many of your type in those days as well. The three wise men did not go to receive prayers or to be healed of an infirmity, nor to request for children, nor wealth. You are aware that the little baby could have done nothing practically to them. The three wise men went there specifically to offer him gifts and to worship him because of the star they saw which led them to recognize Christ's kingship. If you believe in him, you will do the same today, not because he healed you or for other benefits derived from him, but because he is God. Today, everybody recognizes his immaculate lordship and today is the day the king of kings was born you have found love favor grace and all other virtues emanating from christ are woven into one the truth is in this world we are debtors not unto the flesh but unto our Lord Jesus Christ. 
and thereby we have to live a life of gratitude. We are to do this every day of our life, but today is unique and special. Our Lord Jesus Christ brings you peace. He generates love and he remits mercy, forgiveness and sympathy. When you realize this, you have to thank him. This occasion does not behove you to indulge in drinking, in smoking, or in any inordinate affection and disorderly conduct. This is the time when peace, love, and all good things fall like the gentle rain from heaven and to be eligible to receive them, you must not be unmannerly. This is what I am transmitting to the world, that you must love one another, show fellowship and sympathy, do good to all. If we are believers, we shall never be discriminating. Then we shall be granted the privilege of being the sons of God. Whatever you do unto him has its reward. If you do good, you shall receive compensation commensurate with your action. If you do bad, you must also reap what you sow. All those who call themselves Christians should live a life such that all who see them may walk within the light that they remit. Brethren, I do not want to be tedious unto you. One soak of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let them that have ears to hear, let them hear. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.